Hi all, I hope you all are fine. Today we are going to discuss about an important topic in administrative law that is natural justice principles. So you may all familiar with the concept of this natural justice principle because you may all uh, face the face in the situations of this natural justice principle without knowing the principles without the, knowing this natural justice principle so uh, you may face the the principles of natural justice in your daily life in different times suppose you think that you may receive a notice from a uh, panchayat authorities for filing your tax or building tax or some other things uh, you may give a notice from the panchayat authorities and you may gone for hearing uh, before the panchayat authorities and uh, they were given you a notice and uh, a stipulated fine or something you may be paid so in this situation you are going through the principle of natural justice without knowing the exact principle you may gone through this situation in several times in your life so as you all know the ignorance of law is not an excuse that it is explicit in the maxim ignorance of ignorantia juris non excusat which means ignorance of law is not an excuse so you all people in living in india or in any other country any democratic country they should know the basic laws of our country so we, we can avoid the liability by saying that by pleading that i don't know the law or i don't know the law because uh, the reason is that ignorance of law is not an excuse so you we may understand the principle the basic principles of law and uh, we should follow the uh, as a law abiding citizen we should follow the laws so ignorance of law is not an excuse with this introduction we can move to the principle of natural justice so as you all know in the earlier period we are facing a situation that we are from the earlier police state our state function is changed into a welfare state so due to this change the powers and functions of the state reflected in three organs of the government that as we all know the government it is, uh, the branches of government is three that is legislature executive and judiciary due to the change from the earlier police state to a welfare state the powers of the state were increased and it reflected in the three organs of the government so as you all know the judiciary which is already overburdened and so the judicial functions may de it is delegated to the executives so that judicial function when they delegated to the executive authorities it is called as quasi judicial functions so similarly in case of legislative function there is also a delegation from the part of legislature to the executive that is called as delegated legislations so when administrative authorities having this quasi judicial functions they must act fairly and just and equitable manner so they should follow the principles of natural justice that if an administrative authority is given an opportunity to handle a judicial function they must act act just equitable a just and equitable manner so they should follow the principles of natural justice because the principles of natural justice is implicit in article 14 of the indian constitution if an administrative authority is not acting uh, not act as per the natural justice principle it may amount to the violation of article 14 because article uh, natural justice principle is already implicit in article 14 of the indian constitution it is in in different pronouncement of the judge in different judgments it is already declared by the supreme court as article 14 uh, natural justice principle is a part and parcel of article 14 so what do you mean by natural justice principle in simple sense we can say it as what is right and what is wrong so in technical sense it can be equated with the principles of fairness so natural justice principles are not embodied rules as we all know the administrative law as like indian penal code or constitutional law it is not a codified law it is a judge made law administrative law is a judge made law it is evolved from the common law so most of the principles of administrative law is evolved from the common law so the concept of natural justice principle which is implicit in article 14 it has many colors and shades and forms natural justice principle so the principle of natural justice there are three principles that three integral principles for natural justice first one is that is rule against bias the second one is audi alterum patrum that means hear the other side and the third one that is recent decision or speaking orders so 
as you all know that when you have given you, when you get a notice from the from a government authority you are face you are going to that government authority and and giving your uh, standpoint and other things you are giving to the the authorities that is the thing is audi alterum patrum that is uh, giving a notice and giving a chance of fair hearing and there is rule against bias and recent decision and these three things were the integral part of natural justice rule against bias audi alterum patrum and recent decision First, we can look into what do you mean by a rule against bias. So, the administrative authority, when they are doing the quasi-judicial function, they should act impartial. So, administrative authorities who is exercising a quasi-judicial function should must act impartially. So, the principle based on natural justice principle is based mainly on three maxims. First one is nemo debet s judex in propria causa, which means no one should be judged on his own cause. That means if a judge he is having any interest in the case which he is uh, he is going to hear, he should not hear that case because there is a chance for bias. So it is based on the maxim nemo debet s judex in propria causa. That is no one should be judged on his own cause. Then the second one is justice should not only be done but manifestly and undoubtedly undoubtedly be seemed to be done and the third condition is that third maxim related to bias is that judges like scissors wives should be above suspicion so this is the three maxims which is related to rule against bias so bias can be classified into different heads the first one is pecuniary bias and the second one is personal bias and the third one is official bias that is the bias related to subject matter so so there are different kinds of bias first one is pecuniary bias and second one is personal bias and third one is official bias that is the bias which is related to subject matter so now we can look into the first one that is pecuniary bias so a famous case which is related to pecuniary bias is dr bonham's case so dr bonham he is a physician who is working in royal college of london and he is practicing as a physician without getting a license from the authority so the authority find uh, dr bonham's for a, uh, for some uh, some pennies and uh, when uh, when the when the case comes in, in front of the judge justice cox said that the fine is divided between the college authorities and the king so the college authority itself has a pecuniary interest in this case so the court held the justice cj held justice cj cox held that it is a case of pecuniary bias because the fine is divided between the college authorities and the king so the college authority has a a pecuniary interest in this case so the court held that it is a case of pecuniary bias so the second thing that is the personal bias it is the bias which is arising out through friendship enmity personal grudge etc in the uh, when uh, due to friendship due to enmity due to professional grudge in this all aspect personal bias may arise so a classic case in the, in the in for the example of personal bias is ak kripak versus union of india in this case a candidate who belongs to an interview and he is also a candidate and also he is in the interview board at the time of the interview he is uh, he is not at the time of his interview he is not in the panel of members uh, members and uh, he went out and he attended the interview so here and he is selected and it was challenged the court held that it is a matter of personal bias that it, it may it is a bias he is already uh, a, uh, he is already in the interview panel and he is already and he is also a candidate for the interview it is a uh, good case for a personal bias and it uh, relate to the personal bias that is ak kripak versus union of india and the third one that is official bias that is bias related to subject matter the subject matter that is general interest in the subject matter of the dispute general interest there is a general interest in the subject matter of the di dispute so in gullapalli nageshwara rao was a state of andhra pradesh road transport corporation in this case the state government of andhra pradesh nationalized the transport corporation and uh, the petitioner challenged this and uh, and hearing was heard by the secretary of the transport corporation and he, and he is also invited 
uh, for the you know, he has also invited the quotation and other things for the com, uh, for the um, nationalization of this transport uh, transport transportation so the court held that both of the things were done by the same authority that is the secretary of the uh, road trade transport corporation so there is a chance for official bias so it uh, the court held that it is a matter relating to official bias so the bias which is categorized into three that is pecuniary bias personal bias and official bias pecuniary bias uh, it is related to some pecuniary interest and personal bias it may happen due to friendship enmity personal grudge uh, and other things and official bias which is related to subject matter the general interest in the subject matter okay now we can move to the next aspect or next ingredient of natural justice that is audi alterum patrum which means here the other side it simply means here the other side so the both the sides should be here that the petitioner and the respondent should be here before taking a decision so in a fair hearing there is two conditions that is notice and opportunity of hearing that is the concept included in audi alterum patrum that is notice and opportunity for fair hearing so opportunity of fair hearing means that is the adjudicating authority should give a full opportunity to the affected person to produce all relevant documents all relevant documents and full opportunity should be given to the uh, parties to produce all the relevant documents relating to uh, a matter then the adjudicating authority must disclose must disclose all evidences must disclose all evidences or materials placed it in in of the court in the proceedings that they should give uh, all the mat all the documents which is related to petitioners and de defendants should be given to them and they should know what all are included in these matters then also then the next thing is that any material or evidence adduced by one party cannot be utilized against other party unless the opportunity to explain so all materials adduced by one party should be given to other party and evidence adduced by other party cannot be utilized against the other party unless the opportunity to explain and criticize or rebut the evidence so the chance for rebut criticize and to understand what all are included in that evidence should be given to the other party then the right to representation right to representation through a council that uh, if a person who is interested to uh, um, bear an advocate uh, before the uh, tribunal or before uh, another thing that is not a part of that is not a part of natural justice but if if a statute which is stipulated the thing that the need of a lawyer can be taken it can be uh, it can be given but in the case uh, in the normal ca normal case in natural justice uh, we can't claim it as a as a part of natural justice that is right to representation through a council unless it is recognized by a statute or confirmed by a statute so this is the aspect of opportunity of fair hearing then the last condition or last ingredient of natural justice is speaking order or reasoned decision so speaking order or reasoned decision means the order which contains reason for decision if you uh, if you are if you if you are an administrative authority or if you are handling the power of an administrative authority when you make a order it should be clearly says the reason for the orders so in what uh, that the conclusion of that order is based on what all are, what all are the reasons how you can reach the uh, reach the order so while you take a judgment while you take a court judgment the judgment consists of two parts that is ratio decidendi and obiter dictum the ratio which is the reason for the decision so similarly in case of quasi judicial authority when they are giving or when they are issue an order that order should be crystal clear what is the reason for that order it should be mentioned in that order so it, it should not be a vague one there should be a reason so the recent decision which is a safeguard against all possible injustice and arbitrary exercise of powers by quasi judicial authority so and uh, the speaking order uh, speaking order means the uh, the decision should be a recent one it should clearly mention the reasons for the decision or reasons for the conclusion should be clearly mentioned the natural justice principle which is one of the important components of administrative law there is some exceptions also to the principles of natural justice so natural justice principle can uh, can be exempted in certain cases and the cases includes legislative action urgency and public interest 
impracticability, useless formality theory. These were the conditions to exclude the principles of natural justice principle. That means the legislative action means if a legislature is making a law or if a legislature subdelegated their power to the administrative authority to make law, there is no uh, procedural formality of hearing or other things to make a law. For making a law, there is no need of natural justice principle. They, not, they, do, they don't need to be comply with the principle of natural justice principle in case of legislative action. Then the second thing is that in the case of urgency and public interest. Suppose you think that the district collector of Trivandrum want to erect a building because it is so much uh, danger to the public. So in that situation, there is heavy rain in the city. And in that situation, the comply of natural justice is not uh, important because it is an urgency and public interest. If that building is not erected or is, if that building is not demolished, it may, uh, it may keep danger to the public. So in case of urgency and public interest, the natural justice can be exempted. Then the third thing that is impracticability. Impracticability means, suppose a situation in a university examination, suppose you think that a mass copying is happened in the university examination and it is proved that the mass copying has happened and there is evidence for all the things. So the students of the examinations were given a chance to reappear that examination and they can claim that they will not given an opportunity of fair hearing. So that is an impracticability in a university examination it consists uh, consist of 100 numbers or 1000 numbers of students. It is not practical to give an opportunity of hearing to uh, all the students. So in that cases in the case it is called as impracticability and the last one that is uh, useless formality theory. Useless formality theory which means if a uh, if an if a thing if an um, if an order which is only have one conclusion there is only one conclusion for an order then uh, we can't give uh, we, it is not uh, co compulsory to uh, give the natural justice principle that the situation is that consider uh, if i am uh, uh, the university has given me a chance to uh, do mphil and i have taken leave to do mphil and uh, Within, within that, with, with, with that permission, I am going to some other university, uh, university and taken a PhD from that university with the order to take MPhil. And uh, when enquiry comes, I admitted that I take PhD in the time of uh, when I was uh, uh, given an order to take an MPhil. So it is already admitted. And the conclusion and the conclusion is same. I may be uh, given a suspension or some other thing. So the conclusion is same. I have admitted the factor, uh, fact. So in this situation, it is a useless formality to give natural justice. So these were the exceptions to the principles of natural justice. So in a short way, this is uh, called as natural justice principle. There were so many judgments and other things can be included in this uh, natural justice principle. So it is a wide topic and rule against bias, bias is also a wide topic. I have given it some general introductions relating to natural justice principle. I hope it is uh, informative to, to you. and. Thank you. Thank you all.